Oh, thanks, Nate. We just have to update. Married 37 years, five grandchildren, and another one on the way in September. Great. So I'm, uh, I think you guys heard some great message, right? America is wonderful. We have great opportunities. I'll, I'll give you a little perspective from my perspective of knowing government really well and how important it is to have Alexander and good conservatives in state government and in all government, actually. I don't think people understand. Um, Alex, Alexander, um, people don't plan to be here. Right? You just don't plan to be here. You're out here and you're frustrated, as in I, I believe many of you probably are. Every door, every door I knock when somebody tells me I'm frustrated, I thank them because there aren't enough people that are frustrated because they're not really paying attention. So we really don't plan to be here. We all have careers, but we all have, all have spoke up and started to be a part of your community. And, and you're the ones making everything happen. Stepping up to this is an amazing sacrifice of your own personal time, your efforts and your resources. Um, I don't think people understand as well, Alexander, your wife and your family, the sacrifice that they're going to put forth to allow you to do this, it's transformational. And so what every one of you can do is you can help him because it, this entire process is only available or only possible because of the volunteers that we have out here today. So your money means something and your time means more. You can be influential. What we have at the state level today, you've seen, we, we could talk COVID all day long. I could talk about ineffective government. But what I'll tell you today is I used to think we were 10 years behind or a decade behind from trying to transform our government. With the people that are in there serving today, the staff and the people that they're filling those jobs with are greater activists than the people who occupy the offices on the Democrat side. You go to St. Paul, you go to Minneapolis. I've toured, I've gone, I do a ton of work in Minneapolis and I do a ton of work in St. Paul. Being a frog towner, being born and raised here, we wanna make sure to support Republican candidates. Anybody who's willing to put their name on the dotted line will do it. But I don't think you understand the, what government is now filled with. Government is filled with a whole host of activists and what they're doing is they're working against everything that you believe in every single day. In what, in what statutes they choose to implement, what, choose, what those that they choose to uh, uh, not enforce or from a law perspective. And today the, gross, the largest gross injustice they have is they're so emboldened and empowered. You saw, you heard Eric Lucero talking about the, the emergency powers. What grants him the emergency powers are, is not the legislature. And the, this, that statute was never intended to run forever. This guy's not giving it up through the election. He is not. And depends on who wins the election at the federal level, it will determine whether he gives it up here and, and what we're gonna do. But, but what empowers him is our constitutional officers. So every single vote matters. Every single one of your vote matters and every single vote for a constitutional office matters. The constitutional office is what allows him and grants him the power to, to execute this executive order and every, or I'm sorry, the emergency peacetime powers and every executive order in that. So if you believe it's unconstitutional, well, wouldn't you go to your defender of our constitution? A little difficult to do that when he's the guy who signed off on every one of those executive orders. And you need to understand that. And as it relates to COVID and the importance of what we're at, I used to tell everybody, um, in COVID today, I think it's a great example what you see. They refuse to share the actual data with you. We're all smart and intelligent enough to figure out and, and digest data and, and provide our own analytical thinking about what the truth is. They no longer believe that. They refuse to provide the data. In fact, my motto has been, I know government better than anybody down there today. Um, the motto, my motto is, um, what they willfully withhold is far more damaging than the lies they tell us. And that's in every facet of us. They refuse to provide a, a sitting legislator. We're not anything special, by the way. We're still your neighbors after we're elected, um, but we're blessed to serve and have the opportunity. But the disdain that that machine has for the legislative body and the executive body is unbelievable. I, I welcome everybody. You should come down and tour the facilities, greatest thing. And Alexander, I'll take you and your family anytime you wanna go down there in the short term to, uh, to get you uh, used to that feeling. Um, but it's important because all of these these offices and, and the, the elections that we have from this day forward. I used to tell everybody I didn't plan to be here. I'm a first term, I'm on my first election, but we have to take and hold the Minnesota Senate. What's coming up and everybody understands the census is important, but what the census is gonna drive is the redrawing of our, our political boundaries. If we don't keep the Minnesota Senate, we don't have a voice at the table and they will redistrict, redistrict us out for decades. It's that important. 
everything Alex is going to do is going to make sure that we have a voice and we put the emphasis on and every one of you as volunteers can help across the board. And then, because I, I think what Alex is going to do and Sheila and, and Lacey and Kendall and everybody that's in, in Minneapolis and St. Paul, I think what you're going to do is you're going to provide the opportunity to hear an alternative message. Um, much like Nia said, um, the rhetoric out there is disgusting. The media is fully aligned and they're they're selling the message and their, mis their mission for the Democrats would only be possible with their partners in the media. Don't believe anything you hear and anything they say. Uh, you know it's wrong. So with that, um, okay, all right, I see Lacey. <laughs> um, it, it's extremely important. And so you guys, I can't thank you enough for coming out. This is an amazing showing for Alexander and his family and you need to keep it up. This is a tough grind, but it's an amazing, fun opportunity. Go out and knock some doors. The, most, the single most valuable thing you can do is go out and knock a door for, for everybody. Um, but Alexander specifically, go out and knock every door you can. And if you're, if you're not focused on it seven days a week, except for football season, Alexander, don't knock during football season. You wanna win votes, not detract from you. Um, but we can't express it you know, enough. I used to tell everybody again, it was, it, I thought the, the uh, battle was a decade and I was fighting for my grandchildren. The battle's on our doorstep today. This is the most monumental election. We've got the election in, in 2020, which determines whether we have a voice on redistricting. And then we are all up again in 2022. And that's a lot tougher election. So we need everybody to get out. Everybody knows somebody who hasn't voted, somebody who's not registered to vote. That's what it's about today. And we need to get them out to the polls. So with that, I, I appreciate your time and I'll be around after if anybody has any questions. Thank you, everybody.